Hi there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to explain the concept of gain bandwidth product for op amps. Before I go on, I need to warn you that if you don't already know the difference between open loop and closed loop gains, I suggest you go back and check out my video on that first. Then come back here for more about the relationship between gain and bandwidth. So the gain bandwidth product is exactly what the name says. It's the product of the gain at DC and the bandwidth when in the open loop configuration. So looking more closely here at the Bode plot for the op amp, the open loop gain is here. Well, it's this whole curve, but the open loop gain at DC is up here at a gain of about 10 million. And the bandwidth is right here. It's the frequency point where the open loop gain starts to fall off. And the product of these two values is the gain bandwidth product. And for this particular op amp, this value is 10 to the seventh times 10. It's 100 million. So I should note that the values that you see here are for a particular op amp and will vary from op amp to op amp, but the principle stays the same. Also note that the gain that I'm using for this product is, the, is a unitless gain, the gain as a ratio, it's not in decibels. Now here's an interesting thing. The gain bandwidth product is sometimes specified as the unity gain bandwidth. And this is the frequency at which the open loop gain drops to one or zero dB. And then if you look at the frequency at that point, that's the unity gain bandwidth. So for this particular op amp, that's where the gain is one. That's the intersection there on the frequency response curve. And look, that's at 100 megahertz. That's the same value as the gain bandwidth product. And this totally makes sense. This is the gain of one times the bandwidth at that point. And it gets even more interesting. Pick any point on this graph and get the open loop gain and the frequency at that point. Multiply those two values together and you will always end up with that 100 megahertz. So for example, at 10 to the fifth or 100,000, bandwidth is one kilohertz. 100,000 times one kilohertz is 100 megahertz. At gain of 1,000 right there, 1,000 times 100,000, again, 100 megahertz. Right there, the gain of 10,000 and a frequency of 10,000, 100 megahertz. Every single point on that line, the value for the gain times the value for the frequency will give you 100 megahertz. So this means that when we create a closed loop trans voltage amplifier like one of these two, I should note that for trans current amplifiers, the relationship between gain bandwidth is not linear, so this doesn't apply. But when it's a trans voltage amplifier, the gain is reduced by a factor based on the feedback network, but the bandwidth is increased by the same factor. So the gain bandwidth product is the same. And again, for the theory behind why this is the case, check out my open loop versus closed loop gain video. So the gain bandwidth product is useful for helping you predict the bandwidth of a trans voltage amplifier that you've designed or for selecting an appropriate op amp with a gain bandwidth product sufficient to give you the bandwidth that you need. So let's take a look at a couple of examples to better see what I mean. So here we have a non-inverting amplifier configuration. We've got one of these LM358B op amps here and the gain of our circuit is 10. From the data sheet, I found that the gain bandwidth product of this particular op amp is 1.2 megahertz. So that means the bandwidth when the gain is 10 is that gain bandwidth product divided by the gain for this particular circuit. So the bandwidth for this particular circuit is 120 kilohertz. Here's a second example. So let's say we need to design this circuit and the bandwidth that we need has to be at least 100 kilohertz. So what gain bandwidth product would we need for the op amp that we use in this particular circuit? For this circuit, it is an inverting amplifier and the gain is negative 20 over one. So it's a gain of negative 20. The magnitude of the gain is then 20. So then the gain bandwidth product that we need is 20 times 100 kilohertz, which is two megahertz. So we need an op amp with a gain bandwidth product at least two megahertz. So that LM358B from the previous slide will not work since its gain bandwidth was only 1.2 megahertz. So what I can do then is go to the website of an op amp provider. I'm just gonna pick analog devices because I use Texas Instruments for the last example. Go to their main page here, and then I'm going to go into products. I'm gonna go into op amps. I'm gonna scroll down here to this product selection table. And when I go into this product selection table, this is basically a parametric search and I can search based on whatever parameters I want. And what I want is the gain bandwidth product. I need something more than two megahertz. I don't need it to be that much more than two megahertz. So I can go something like from two to 
three megahertz. And then I get a list here. Now, since I don't have any other parameters that I care about, I'm gonna go over to price and sort it based on price. And I'll pick one of the first ones in this list here. This one's got a gain bandwidth product of three megahertz. I don't really care about any of the other parameters. So I'm gonna choose this 80, 85, 91 as a cost of 33 cents when you buy them in units of a thousand or more. And if I go into the data sheet, I'll find the part of the characteristics on dynamic performance. And you can see here, gain bandwidth product is 2.2 megahertz. And that means that the bandwidth I will get when I have a gain of 10 is 110 kilohertz, which meets my requirements of having it at least 100 kilohertz. Okay, well, that's it for the gain bandwidth product. I hope now you have a good understanding of what it is and how it can be used. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.